You know, there's a saying that the world is a wonderful place and worth fighting for. I believe the second part. Meaning, even if the world is not always a wonderful place, it's worth fighting for. And if you think about it, that's, that's what love really means. Whenever you say to somebody, I love you, what you're really saying is, you're worth fighting for. When you get married, people know this especially, you're not marrying someone who's perfect, and that's not what you're saying to them. You're not saying, I'm marrying you because you're everything I want you to be right now. What you're saying is, I believe in the relationship that we have, and that relationship is worth fighting for. I was really struck one time I met a man whose his wife, after many years of marriage, she was actually had to go to a hospital after a sort of mental breakdown at one point. She just suffered a great deal in her life at one and uh, the man, he just was so intent on helping her through every single moment of kind of her suffering. And when I asked him what kept him going, he said, when I told my wife I loved her, what I meant was, I'll never give up on us. And I meant that. And I won't. Because to love is to believe in the other person, to believe in all the potential that they have, even before it's there. Essentially, that's what your parents have been doing for all of you and my mother did for me from the moment I was born. Right? Every parent looks at their child and says, I see everything that you could be. You're not that yet but I see your potential and you're worth fighting for to bring that out. It's also what Joyce has been doing very tenaciously over this past year with all of you. We, every single week, fighting to bring out and build that potential in all of you. And this, I believe, is God's fundamental message to us in Jesus Christ. The world isn't a perfect place but it's worth fighting for. And we human beings, with all of our brokenness, with our sinfulness, with our weaknesses and our constant failures to live up to everything we wish that we were, when God tells us that He loves us, He's not saying that we're perfect. He's actually saying something much better than that. He's saying, you're worth fighting for. I see everything that you could be, and I'm all in to help you become that. And the sacraments of the church are the ultimate expression of that declaration of God, which we find fully expressed in the crucifix. That's why Catholics love the crucifix. It's not to just show forth the death of Jesus Christ, but it was in his death that we were redeemed. It was in his death on that cross that revealed the depths of God's love for us. And it was in that death on the cross that we received every single sacrament that we celebrate, especially three. When Christ hung on the cross, before when he died, three things came out of his body, spirit, water, and blood. Each of those represents one of the sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation. So he had a very unique death when right before he died, he said he handed over his spirit. Now in that time, no one had ever described a death in that way. No one handed over the, their spirit. All of us die. It's passive. When Jesus Christ died, it was active. He actively breathed forth his spirit. And then right after that, a centurion came and pierced him in the side, right? right into the heart. And what came out of his side? Blood and water. Three things came out of Christ at the moment of his death. Spirit, water, and blood. And those three things are what we are celebrating here today. Because baptism is, that's what what cleanses us. And that's what's represented by the water that came forth from his side. Christ is the new temple. He's the one that cleanses us of our sins and makes makes us reborn in God. And the, the blood that came forth from his side, that's what the Eucharist is. 
From the very beginning, the church fathers said, the blood flowing forth from Christ's side is exemplified above all in the Mass where we actually receive the body and blood of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. If you eat my body and drink my blood, you remain in me and I in you. And lastly, the spirit that he breathed forth. He breathed forth his spirit in his death. And that's the spirit that brings us back to life. So water, blood, and spirit. Baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist. And all of these sacraments proclaim one fundamental message from God to a broken world. I'm not giving up on you. You're worth fighting for. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what you'll do in the future, you're worth it. And that's the great drama, I think, of every one of our lives. It's the drama, essentially, of salvation. Our choice to never give up either. Because every relationship, as we know, necessitates two free individuals. Two free persons who choose to stay in the relationship no matter how broken at times it might become. What we have in Jesus Christ through the sacraments is the guarantee that He's all in. That God is never walking away from a relationship with you. That every single time you come into a Catholic church, you'll find Him there already waiting for you. But the drama each of us face in our life is whether we're all in too. To always remain in that relationship. And as we know, the thing that often tempts us to walk away from that relationship is suffering. And sometimes I think that's exactly why Christ gave us the sacraments, the ultimate manifestation of his love, at the moment of his death. Because to Christ, to God, he was all in to the very end. And the difficulty with our life is the more suffering that we endure, the more it makes us question how far our love will stretch before we say, I give up. It's too much. You know, I've watched a lot of your games. I stopped coming as much because it seems like every time I come, you guys lose. And so I was like, maybe it'd just be better luck for you if I just, you know, listen to it on the radio or something. But I got the greatest lesson about who so many of you are from watching the games when you guys lost. That's what told me the most about your character. Because especially Titus and JC, what I saw in you guys when you guys were down about 20 points at one point, almost everybody else on the team had given up. And you kept fighting. Even when there was a point where there was almost no chance that you could win the game. You didn't give up the fight. And what does that mean? That means that you love the game. And that you're in it to the end, no matter what. And that's, in a sense, our drama and our relationship with God. If we ever give up the fight, if we persevere to the very end. St. John Paul II once said, I offer you the option of love, which is the opposite of escape. It sounds very romantic, but perhaps it's the most difficult thing that we ever face in life because as we know, relationships are very messy and it's very hard to remain in love and to not find an excuse to escape in our relationships with one another and in our relationships with God. The message of the sacraments you're about to receive through the cross is God's promise to every one of you that he's all in, that you're worth fighting for even unto death. And today you stand in this church essentially to say the same thing right back to him. This is a relationship worth fighting for. Just as marriage is only the beginning and just as giving birth to a child is only the beginning so what you're about to do today, it's not a goal. It's not a finish line. It's just the beginning of a much deeper relationship with God. And what's most important for all of us 
in this great drama of our salvation is to choose to stay in the relationship, to choose the, op- the option of love, which is the opposite of escape. Because to become a Catholic is not to say that the church is perfect, and it's not to say that we're perfect, and it's not to say our relationship with Jesus Christ is perfect. What it means is this relationship is worth fighting for. And I'm not giving up. I will love him to the very end. If we can do that, we too will be saved. 